Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest today, Anne Marie Waters, is a politician. She's an author. She's someone who's becoming more and more famous throughout the United Kingdom for her new political party. I'm going to let you hear it directly from her. <laughs> Anne Marie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you very much for having me. So tell me about your political party first. Yes, it's, uh, it's called For Britain. We, I started it about two, it would be three years old in October. So two and a bit years ago. I started it after I had, I ran for leader of UKIP, which is the UK Independence Party, which your viewers will probably know best as the one led by Nigel Farage. Uh, I ran for leader of that. I was the bookies' favourite to win. It was uh, it was very much looking like I was going to win. There was lots of controversy. Uh, their elected officials saying they were going to walk out if I won. Uh, the press went crazy about this. Nigel Farage came out and publicly called me uh, racist, Nazi, several other things. Uh, and in the end, I came second, which was huge, actually, considering I'd, I had really just thrown my hat in to see what happened. And uh, I, I came second and I realized that UKIP was not for me. I wanted out. I was tired actually of listening, of waiting for other people to say what needed saying. I was tired of asking for permission to say what needed to say. And I thought, that's it. I'm my own leader now. So I founded my own party to be able to say the things that I, I've spent the last 10, 15 years saying and consistently uh, rebuked for it, even though everything I say is true. So I, I, uh, I, got a bit, I got a bit tired of the political correctness inside UKIP, believe it or not. It's, it's meant to be, it's known as sort of to the, to, the, to the right of the conservatives, but even they won't allow you to talk about the things I was talking about. So I left. Well, let, let's talk about those issues. There's, yeah. a, there's a common saying now that England isn't England anymore. Um, tell our viewers in the US, what does that mean? It means a lot of things, really. I mean, there are still a lot of parts of England which are, are very, one would recognize as England, but there are parts of it that are simply unrecognizable. You simply wouldn't realize you were in England. And it's not an exaggeration to say that. It's true. Uh, there's a thing that we call white flight, for example, which is when, uh, for example, mass immigration from Pakistan, Bangladesh, started with 50s, 60s. Um, they came into neighborhoods and didn't necessarily want the, the white natives living there. So I, there have been several of, sort of uh, campaigns of throwing dog poo through people's letterboxes, harassment, trying to get rid of the white people. So you have this separation and you have, we ha now have a, a multicultural Britain is what we, we call it. Uh, what it actually means is a completely divided Britain. We have black living over here, white living over here, Pakistani, Muslim living over here. Um, an and increased fracture, increasingly fractured society. I'll give you an example. Our second city, Birmingham, second biggest city in England, has a 50,000 people in it who don't speak a word of English. Now that's huge, that is a huge number uh, who can't speak any English and that's just in one city. So we're a very divided country at the moment. Um, and and, and there's, a, there's a huge divide between the the small minority who want more multiculturalism, more immigration, and the majority who don't. But unfortunately, the minority is in charge of just about it. So, so in terms of those numbers, yeah. let's talk about the Islamification yeah. um, uh, of Great Britain. What was the Muslim population, say, 30 years ago uh, versus what it is today? Well, it doubles every 10 years. At the moment, it's around 4 or 5%, we're told. It was 2.5% 10 years ago. The country is 65 million, so I don't know quite, quite what that number is. Um, but it doubles every 10 years is the significant element of it. And uh, we have increasing ghettoization. But of course, with the demographic of Muslims growing, we also have a growth of increases in demands for Sharia law. And this is the main, I would say, uh, there are many ways in which the UK is being Islamized. This is the main one. We are so the let, only- let me, let me stop you on that question because that is exactly the issue that we're facing here in the US. 
our viewers understand that Sharia, which is the application of Islamic dictates from Muhammad, yeah. is very frequently, if not always, incompatible with Western jurisprudence. Yes, it is. In Sharia, you can have slaves. Yes. In Sharia, you can uh, kill your wife or daughter, mm -hmm. certain cases. Yeah. Uh, in Sharia, you can uh, female genital mutilate. I mean, there's just so many things that, that Americans who are uninformed will go, no way, that's not possible. So when people learn what a Sharia court is about, they don't have much enthusiasm. What's the, the sense of that among the general populace in Britain? They're horrified by it, truly horrified by it. But the press and the politicians, the disconnect between the public and the press slash politicians is, it could not possibly be wider. The press and the politicians live in their own little world in Westminster and they are completely disconnected from what the public thinks. People are absolutely horrified by the fact that we have Sharia courts in the UK. I spent years traveling whoa, 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 around. Whoa, whoa. You have the Sharia, the yes, Sharia courts are operational now? Yes, we've had them since 1982. Now they are, they're not illegal. It's, it's, it, legally it's difficult, but I'll explain it as, as best I can. We have a thing called the Arbitration Act. And the Arbitration Act allows for people to privately settle disputes so that they don't go to the courts. The main reason is to keep people out of the courts, expense, etc. Uh, so you can set up an arbitration tribunal and you can appoint an expert on a topic. So if it's a land law issue, you'll appoint a land law expert and they will hear both sides of the story and make a decision. This decision then can be upheld in the real courts. If it was to be challenged, it can be upheld in the real courts, provided it meets a list of criteria laid out in the Arbitration Act itself. Now that means that those criteria are that it must be uh, it must be compatible with English law overall. So the parties will have to have the same equal status, for example. Uh, it would have to be compatible with English law in terms of child protection. It would have to be compatible with criminal law. But it's uh, not. No, it's not. And, and everyone knows it's not, but it just carries on. So it, if, 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 if a father, let's say, yeah. sells his daughter to somebody that she is now instructed to marry, mm -hmm. in no Western world is that acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's akin to slavery. Mm -hmm. If, if, if a father did that, the little girl runs away, the guy that bought the new bride is, is angry because he didn't get the benefit of his bargain, goes to a Sharia court and the Sharia court says, no, no, young lady, you go back to your new husband, Yeah. whatever. What happens when that gets to a real court? Don't the judges just come down with a hammer? The judges would, yes. The judges would throw it out. The judges would deal with it in accordance with English law. The problem is it's not getting to English law. Uh, it's a completely, it's separate. They're living entirely separate lives. So you have people in this country growing up from birth to death entirely under Sharia. It's, un, it's unlawful, most of what they do, but nobody stops it. And if a woman, for example, was mistreated by a Sharia court and she somehow found the self-confidence to insist upon her rights under English law, she would get them. The problem is you're dealing with already battered, beaten down women who don't know the laws of the country they're living in, uh, are completely isolated and have no idea of their rights. So they're living in this, they're, they're acquiescing with this, they're going along with it because they don't actually, from any cases, know any better. Um, it's separate, it's unlawful, most of it is unlawful. Uh, but it happens because nobody is willing to stop it. I mean, if you think about it, you know, it's it, gang rape is illegal in this country too, uh, but nobody was willing to stop it. FGM is illegal in this country. No one is willing to stop it. And the reason they're not willing to stop it is because they fear violence in the streets. I know that this is absolutely true. We know that if we came down hard on child marriage or FGM or any of the other horrors that committed with impunity, there would be rioting in the streets. We know this, we know this, and that's why they won't do it. Anne-Marie, how can our viewers follow you and stay up to date on what you're doing? My party website is forbritain.uk. 
Um, we are completely unique in this country and we're growing in enormous popularity. We're hated, and, I, and hated is a strong word, but it's all ap appropriate. We're hated by the far left. We're hated by the far right. As far as I'm concerned, that's exactly where we need to be. I'm, I'm, that's exactly where I, where I want to put us. But we've got a real, real problem here. We have a real problem with a increasingly fracturing country. There is no unity here. We are now a country where we are covering up Winston Churchill because he's deemed controversial. The BBC now refers to Churchill as a controversial character. Um, and they will come for it in the United States, I have no doubt. They will come for Washington, they will come for Jefferson, they will come for Lincoln. I believe they're already attacking Lincoln um, in the name of Black Lives Matter. You can't make this stuff up, you know, you really, you really can't. Uh, the ignorance is ex extraordinary, but they will. And, and when they come for Washington and Jefferson and, and, and all the rest, they will come for the Constitution. I have no doubt about it. Be very careful. We all rely on your Constitution. We're going to leave it there for today. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Report. Uh, you know how to get a hold of Anne Marie. And for us, please take out your cell phone and text the word truth to 88202. We'll send you the first three chapters in my new book for free. And you'll be signed up to get all of our videos and important information on your cell phone for free. Send truth to 88202 for ATP Report. I'm very new spot.